Bible is full of stories that we all know and love. But how well do we know them? The answer might surprise you. The Bible you thought you knew is going to dive deep into the exquisite details of the biblical stories that make them fascinating and transforming. This week's podcast is going to be a question and answer session. The first question, was the early church the golden age of the church? Now, this is a question that really should be addressed by a church historian rather than a biblical scholar. However, I will talk about uh, the, the church as it is portrayed in the New Testament, and I will not even deign to uh, suggest uh, what you think should think about the early church in the post-biblical period. But I think my answer will sort of, in, in some sense, uh, give you an idea of this. In, in short, there, there was, and in my judgment, is, has never been a golden age in the church. Uh, in the New Testament, in the book of Acts, which is the only story, the only sustained story of the growth of the church, keep in mind that at first, uh, uh, the church was a uh, people who are part of the synagogue. This is a community that were still worshiping on synagogue. When they actually met together outside of the synagogue, this typically was in a home. Now, there, were, there are uh, uh, passages in Acts that suggest that there were certain uh, features of the early church that probably should be described as utopian. Uh, early in the cha first chapters of uh, uh, Acts, uh, chapter 4, for example, we are told that uh, the church uh, was a community, an intentional community. Everyone lived together. Everybody shared uh, for everyone else. Everyone took care of everybody else. Uh, there was no sort of, if there was private property, uh, this property could be sold and it, the uh, proceeds were given for the care of everyone. Uh, and it, it was a, a sort of a completely idyllic, uh, idealistic situation. Uh, at the same time, uh, right off the bat, at the, at the end of chapter 4, we are given this very, very utopian uh, picture of the church. Right after that is the very, very chilling story of an Ananias and Sapphira uh, who sold property, uh, did not tell people what they actually made for it, and they tried to sort of uh, give the, the church a lesser of amount so that they could keep some profits for themselves. And uh, they are rebuked by this, and in matter of fact, they both die on the same day, and it seems to be that it is implicitly uh, to be seen as a kind of form of divine judgment. But the very fact that you would have that story right on the heels of a story about sharing equally, and no one had any need, uh, all kinds of things were taken care of. And then in just a few, um, a few passages later, uh, there are some people who are complaining that uh, certain widows are not being taken care of. And then that shows you that uh, the logistics and the difficulties of having a completely intentional community uh, were, were extreme. And uh, eventually, uh, it, 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 it challenged the uni unity of the church. As well, in the church, uh, sometimes there were leaders who were dis in dispute with each other. Uh, very famously, you have uh, the so-called uh, people who thought that to be a good Christian, you had to first be a good uh, a Jew. And uh, there are disputes with people who said, no, you can be a Christian uh, apart from being uh, a good Jew. And the, in, in some sense, they compromised that in chapter 15. But again, it shows you the difficulties of the uh, of the churches having to deal with practical issues. Also in chapter 15, uh, Paul uh, gets into it with uh, uh, 
a, a man by the name of John and called also Mark, and uh, he ends up not taking him with him with his journey. And again, that shows you that there is friction in the church and uh, feelings are hurt or something such, and the unity is not uh, not quite what we thought. Now, let's also think about how the church is addressed in the letters, uh, especially the Pauline letters. Paul writes uh, uh, letters to Rome, to Corinth, Ephesus, and so forth, and each of the letters deals in an ad hoc way with a theological issue or an ethical issue or a polity issue in terms of how the church is conducting its affairs, how the church is dealing with its theology, its beliefs, how the church uh, is acting and so forth. And sometimes Paul is uh, is kind of tough on the people. He sort of scolds them. Uh, uh, in in Corinthians, famously, he says, uh, "You you you have to stop doing these factions. You you have to have stop have people stop saying I am of Apollos or I am of Paul or I am of Christ." Uh, and Paul even asks, "Is Christ divided? Uh, did did Paul die for your sins?" And that suggests that uh, things were not as rosy uh, as a um, a golden age. Uh, uh, idea would would lead you to believe, and so there was a, a great a great deal of uh, uh, division and, and difficulty in the church. Uh, famously, of course, you have the so-called uh, Judaizers, the very people that uh, Paul wrote Galatians to address. And again, these are people who thought. We are absolutely Christians. We absolutely believe that Jesus was the Messiah, but we still have to keep kosher laws. We still have to worship on the Sabbath. Uh, we still uh, are supposed to uh, circumcise uh, our male babies. Uh, we need to keep the law and so forth. And Paul argued that none of those things were necessary. If you want to do them, fine, but don't compel anyone else to do them. And again, uh, there was this uh, this uh, con conflict, this uh, tension in the church as Gentiles uh, began to be uh, added uh, to the church. Now, before long, the the Gentiles are going to overwhelm the Jews, and uh, in just maybe a couple, two or three centuries, uh, everyone is going to forget that the the earliest church was almost 100% uh, Jewish in, uh, in, in the demographically. So in any case, uh, the church is described in the New Testament as occasionally a utopian. That, that sounds like something that happened relatively uh, for, for a very, very relatively short time because of the logistics that it takes uh, to live that intentionally, the more members you add, the more difficulty uh, that would be, and uh, there's there's a reason why these uh, these attempts to imitate such intentional communities uh, have have tended to be sporadic. Uh, they have been uh, tempted. They have been uh, ephemeral, very very temporary. Uh, it seems to be very very difficult to sustain over the long haul. Now, this uh, leads to another question, and in some ways it's related to the first question, and that has to do with what the uh, earliest uh, followers of Jesus were called. Now, in the book of Acts, sometimes they're called people of the way. Uh, there's only a couple of times in the New Testament where the word Christian is actually used. It is first used in Antioch, uh, according to the book of Acts. But here's what's interesting to me. The most common way that, uh, for example, Paul in his letters addressed, addressed the members of the church was to call them saints, hagioi, or hagius uh, in the plural. And that simply means holy ones or saints. And what is interesting about that is, is the way we think of saints. When you and I think of saints, we typically think of what I would call uh, upper, upper, upper case saints. 
uh, St. Barnabas, uh, St. Paul, St. Mark, St. Luke, St. Matthew, the kind of people that we uh, uh, name churches for or that we name hospitals for. Um, For 20 years, I was at St. Margaret's uh, uh, Episcopal Church in Bellevue as an associate priest. Uh, St. Margaret ha- was a remarkable Christian, and and so uh, she was uh, canonized later on. Uh, I actually have trouble with the idea of uppercase saints uh, because of my strong belief that everyone uh, that is a Christian has already begun the process of sanctification, and that process of sanctification will never end. Uh, And that's why Paul can address these churches, call the people he addresses saints, and yet have all of these problems that he wants them to attend to. Uh, He wants to to fix them. He wants them to amend uh, this or that way of life. He wants them to uh, be more uh, uh, careful about their theology or their ethics. He, He admonishes them to do this and not to do that. And yet they are all called saints. And the problem with the upper class saints is that leads us to believe, well, that's that's for a different category of Christian. I'm just an ordinary Christian. I'm uh, I'm not a special Christian. Uh, and people should not expect too much from from myself, and I don't even expect that much from myself. Sometimes we hear people say, "Well, I'm no saint." Or we might even say about someone else, well, he or she is no saint. And that's kind of a way of saying that um, I have uh, this fault or that fault. Uh, I engage in this little sin or that little sin. Or um, when we say that someone is not quite a saint, we are saying, well, uh, this person's pretty good, but uh, they're not going to be canonized as an upper class uh, saint anytime soon. But the matter, the matter of the fact is that uh, everyone who has faith in Christ, everyone who is a member of the church, is already a hagios, a saint. And that saint is already entering the process of sanctification. And that process of sanctification will continue. Now, I know that there are uh, people who believe that uh, second sanctification is instantaneous, and once uh, you are sanctified, it's all done. Uh, well, God bless you if you believe that. That's just fine. In my judgment, however, that sanct- sanctification is a process uh, that uh, continues. That's the same way with Israel. God chose Israel. God elected Israel. And um, Israel is described as a community of saints in the book of Exodus. Well, that's true. Israel was a group of saints, but they were, they, were, they were saints that sinned all the time. And so the process of sanctification had to continue, and it did continue. So though even when you are elected by God, even though you have initial faith— uh, you are still, you are already uh, start of the process of sanctification, and that is a process, biblically speaking, I believe, uh, that continues uh, on. Uh, so anyway, that has to do with the whole idea of the church as being a golden age. As a matter of fact, uh, there has been never a golden age of the church because the church is made up of people, and people are flawed. People are fallible. People make mistakes. Uh, think of some of the great communal sins uh, that have beset the church over the years. Uh, some of these are so egregious, we today cannot even understand how people could do this. When you think of Uh, the way uh, Jews have been vilified and not just simply argued against theologically, but actually mistreated uh, politically and socially and uh, uh, and have had pogroms against them. Uh, 
when you th- when you read what uh, Martin Luther said about the Jews, it's completely cringe worthy. Uh, or you think about uh, the colonialism of the European powers, Spain, Britain, uh, the Netherlands, uh, France, uh, 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 and other, and other uh, European uh, communities. Um, and these were all Christian in one way or another. Some of them are Christian because they had established Christian churches as the official religion, or at least they were demographically Christian. And a great deal of colonialism was based on very, very unchristian ideas about cultural and racial superiority, something that is never appropriate uh, for a Christian. And yet the church uh, engaged in that. Uh, the the English uh, bragged that the uh, the sun never set on the British Empire. Well, the the people who were colonized uh, might have had a very very different view of the advantages of being colonized. Uh, and again, this was an activity in which Christians were engaged or the, the whole issue of slavery, uh, or in America, the, the Civil War that was fought to uh, protect slavery, or the Jim Crow laws that uh, were developed after the Civil War uh, to oppress black people. And it would be nice to say that, well, Christians didn't do that, but Christians, as a matter of fact, did do that. Very orthodox Christians, very conservative Christians, even people who would later be proudly uh, termed a fundamentalist or an evangelical uh, Christian uh, were engaged in that and sometimes are, are still doing that. And depending on who you ask, uh, have not even uh, come close to getting rid of this uh, outrageous form of racism. So given the fact that the church is sanctified, but always in the process of sanctification, should give us pause about viewing any particular period as the golden age. I think the Reformers once said that uh, the church is be, is reformed and should always subject itself to reforming, which is sort of the, uh, the idea that I am uh, arguing about here. So in any case, two questions. What was, was the early church and golden age? And the answer is no. And the second uh, question related to it is that uh, we are all lower case saints and we should be very, very grateful to God for that. Uh, we are in the process of sanctification and uh, continue in that process uh, with God's help. So... We'll we'll do another question and answer uh, session um, uh, soon. For now, let me uh, encourage you to go to my website, faspina.com. Let me know what your email is so that I can contact you when the time is right. And uh, also, if you have a, another question that you would ask, want me to address in a future Q and A session, email me at fspina one zero six at gmail.com. Thank you. I want to thank you so very much for listening to The Bible You Thought You Knew. I have a question for you. Do you have a question or topic that you'd like me to cover on the podcast? If so, all you need to do is head over to Apple Podcasts and do two simple things. One, leave a rating and review telling me what you think of the podcast. Two, in that review, ask anything you want related to the Bible. That's all you have to do. Then, listen in to hear your question answered on a future episode. Join us next time on The Bible You Thought You Knew when we discuss Jesus' personal Bible. God bless.